Welcome to Paradise in the Pines, a podcast about the people, places, and stories that make this the home of American golf. Brought to you by the Pinehurst Southern Pines Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Okay, let's do this thing. Hello and welcome to Paradise in the Pines. I'm Phil Wurz with the Pinehurst Southern Pines Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Joined today by Tom Pashley, the president of Pinehurst Resort, also the chairman of the aforementioned CVB. Tom, thanks for joining us on Paradise in the Pines. It's a pleasure to be here, Phil. This is a nice setup. I'm impressed. It's, it's great. We, uh, we're glad that you're here. Yeah, 27 years you've been at Pinehurst, Pinehurst Resort. Uh, during a time, arguably the most historic part of the history of that resort, what has it been like to have a front row seat to everything that's been going on there, even before the first U.S. Open in 1999? It has been an amazing 27 years. Um, I started in 1996 and, uh, and Pinehurst was preparing for the 1999 U.S. Open, which was very exciting. Down the road, mid uh, Pine Needles had just hosted the Women's Open in 1996. Right. So the USGA was beginning to bring their championships here. And so it really felt like in 1999 with the U.S. Open that Pinehurst was being discovered again, you know, for a right. place that was almost 100 years old. It, it seems weird, or it was 100 years old uh, to be rediscovered. But I think that U.S. Open back in 1999 really put Pinehurst back on the map. Pinehurst number two back on the bucket list for people who want to come and play golf. So, so to see it, you know, be rediscovered and then to watch it evolve really over the last 20 years or so, has been very gratifying. And and I love nothing more than having people visit our area, mm-hmm. uh, f- appreciate the history, have a little bit of fun and go back and, and tell their friends about it. And it's just this virtuous cycle. So it's, it's been neat to be able to see over 20 plus years, uh, the, the number of people who've come to our area, the number of people who've fallen in love with it, mm-hmm. the number of people who now call it home. Right. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a wonderful place. And it's one of my passions is to make sure people come here, find something about our area that they can connect with. And hopefully that keeps them coming back. And you mentioned that first U.S. Open in 1999. You couldn't have not have written a better Hollywood script than to have Payne Stewart win that championship. I mean, talk about putting Pinehurst on the map. I mean, what has the pain effect been uh, for Piners Resort? You see the statue behind uh, the clubhouse, and I'm sure you see hundreds of thousands of people every year take their picture of that statue. It, it is so iconic, and it is is definitely synonymous with the resort. It it uh, clearly. Um, you, I was standing behind that 18th green as he was looking at that 18 foot putt, and uh, I think all of us were having trouble breathing, and and you've. If he missed, it was going to be an 18-hole playoff the right. next day, and we were all very involved in the championship, and, and that's really the last thing you want is an 18-hole <laughs> playoff the next day because you just you've peaked. You you, right. you peak on Sunday, and so to to sit there and witness him make that putt with that much pressure on, with with uh, Phil standing there on the green, mm-hmm. uh, ready to go into an 18-hole playoff. Phil's wife was pregnant; they were about to have their first child. Bones had the beeper, yeah. and if if Amy called, Phil was going to leave. Uh, so there was so much happening, and to watch him, you know, calmly strike that thing in, and and then the celebration that that happened afterwards, uh, it's amazing. Like you mentioned, the the statue now is the most photographed spot, I believe, in Pinehurst. Right. And so many people, anytime we Pinehurst Resort ever posts something about Payne Stewart, whether it's on our social media feeds or whatever, so many people connect with it and relate to it. And, and I'm amazed at how many of them say they were here and and they were standing on that green and they witnessed that putt. And it, it, you know, he really has become a symbol of of Pinehurst, and what an amazing memory that we all get to share in in, in watching that, that that pose, and the the type of person that he had become. You know, yeah. his whole story was remarkable to, right. to how he had evolved from from uh, from his youth to to just kind of finding peace within himself. Um, clearly, lost him too soon, but his his legacy lives on here every day. And so does his sleeves from the the the, the cut off vest are, are in. The Deuce, uh, if people don't know, the restaurant that overlooks the final hole. And number two, people can see a piece of history right there as well. Such a stylish guy. It's amazing <laughs> to think that he, he literally walked into the building, the Paget Learning Center, right on top of the driving range at Pinehurst with a long sleeve rain shirt. Yeah. And he asked to borrow a pair of scissors. And, and the, the morning before his final round, he cut those sleeves off uh, and invented you know, a, a short sleeve rain shirt. And yeah, those, those sleeves are now proudly displayed at the Deuce. Then you had subsequent U.S. Opens, uh, 2005, which was won by Michael Campbell. 
And then 2014, the dual U.S. Opens, where you had the men's and the women's back-to-back. Uh, Martin Keimer winning the championship then, and then followed by Michelle Wee. Uh, what was it like having those dual U.S. Opens? Do you see that ever happening again? Pinehurst is always great about firsts. Uh, so it was really cool to see that. And then also with the U.S. Amateur playing the championship on number four, the morning round, and then the afternoon on number two. So uh, do you ever see that happening again? Yeah, well, you know, what was it like? It, it was It was amazing. It had clearly never been done before, and it was a, an opportunity to showcase the best in golf, the best men playing mm-hmm. in one week, the best women playing the very next week on the same golf course set up in a very similar fashion. So you can see, you know, it, it wasn't a necessarily built as a battle of the sexes, if you will, but right. it was really great to see the highest level performing uh, in back-to-back weeks. And there's so much speculation going into it uh, that, what was the golf course going to be like in week two? Because yeah. typically for a U.S. Open, you know, you get it right to the edge. The greens are firm and baked out. Um, and so a lot of a lot of speculation about will the golf course be able to handle two weeks? Will the divots mm-hmm. left from week one be in play in week two? And so it's a really a tip of the cap to the USGA, one, for having the, the courage to try it, right. and two, for putting the time and the energy in to make sure that it was perfect. And it really worked out amazingly. Uh, I think our community absorbed it, you know, mm-hmm. again, 14 days of championship golf with volunteers and everything else is a challenge, but I think we, we did a great job. And so if it were up to me, I'd do it again in a heartbeat. It was a wonderful mm. two weeks, um, showcased our area in a way that you couldn't imagine. So uh, will the USGA want to do it again? I have no idea if they're, they're, if they're up for it, but if they are, we are. Well, the USGA has been very generous and very great to the Pinehurst area. Uh, the announcement they made on September the 9th, 2020 to, uh, build a second headquarters here and everything, the announcements of the additional U.S. Opens in 29, 35, 41, 47. Uh, did I get those right, by the way? You did. Okay. Well done. I, as many <laughs> times as I say it, uh, just want to make sure I get those dates right. But how impactful was that? I mean, it's a game changer, without a doubt. Uh, to have the USGA and all the things they're going to bring to this destination, what will be the impact of that and what are they bringing here? Yeah, it, you know, one of the questions we get asked all the time from other other clubs and, and members at clubs that you know, aspire to host a U.S. Open is how do you do it? You know, how do you get to host a U.S. Open? And and it's it, it, it it's something that it starts with a golf course. You got to have an amazing golf course. You got to have a community mm-hmm. that can support it. Corporate hospitality, uh, and so luckily, you know, Pinehurst number two passed the test on on each one of those and each opportunity we got. Truly, each opportunity our area had to host the U.S. Open Championship, we we put our best foot forward because right. we were hoping for something bigger down the line, and and we 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 were lucky to get it. Um, and so for the USGA to, to announce Pinehurst as its first anchor site and the fact that the U.S. Open will come every five to six years, that they'll have a physical presence with their test center, their mm-hmm. green section, uh, their championship staff. Um, it really reminds me of St. Andrews. And, and yeah. St. Andrews has the old course. It has mm-hmm. the RNA. And it has the Open Championship. And, and the reverence that we all feel when we think about the old course in St. Andrews, I hope, is going to be something that will translate to how people will. And maybe they already do. You know, yeah. Pinehurst is the home of golf, and 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 I think we've always said that, and and we've felt it and believed it. But now, uh, with with our governing body here and a U.S. Open Championship every five to six years, I think it legitimizes what we've been saying. And it's interesting because you were people don't know you were born and raised in Augusta, Georgia, home of course of the Masters. And when you first came to Pinehurst and discovered this little hamlet. Uh, that is now such a historical, iconic, and globally recognized place. It was basically kismet, don't you think? That, I mean, you and your brother chose to one place to come, and this is where you decided to, to visit. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it started out as a high school graduation uh, gift for my parents, for my brother and I to go on a golf trip, and uh, he chose Pinehurst. I had never heard of Pinehurst. Hmm. It was on the cover of a Southern Lynx magazine, right. and so it was about a four-hour drive from Augusta, and uh, we got here and stayed in the stately Carolina hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, and we still laugh about it to this day that, you know, to eat in the restaurants back then, you had to have sport coats. And when we checked in, they said, well, you know, jackets are required for your evening meals. And we, <laughs> we shook our heads like we knew what that was. And then we walked around the corner and got on the elevator and, and we're shocked. You know, what are we going to do? Yeah. Uh, so anyhow, uh, yeah, we have great memories of, of coming here when we were young and took back then rolls of film on every golf course we had a chance to play. And I think it, for me, it planted a seed and it, it stirred my passion for Pinehurst. And when I got an opportunity to come and work here, it was that dream coming true. What, as president of Pinehurst Resort, you've seen such a transition and change over those 27 years. Um, to be, frankly, I think 
the resort was kind of perceived as being kind of stuffy, maybe back in the late 90s uh, before you had the U.S. Open. And now it's become such a cool, hip vibe with the brewery and the cradle and everything that's going on here. What has it been like to be part of something that you you have this canvas and you can change it all the time? And you have such a wonderful ownership with Mr. Bob Debman Jr., uh, you know, him being involved. How important is he that always wants to continually progress and maintain the history, but still progress and change. Yeah, it, it's the history is, is something you can't you can't make up. Obviously, so that's our foundation to to be able to have been, you know, the site of the the nineteen fifty one Ryder Cup matches, the nineteen thirty six PGA, to have Hogan and Francis we met and, and Nicholas and Palmer and Snead and Nelson and all those guys play here during their careers uh, is is I think truly our foundation. And mm-hmm. and then when we, when we began to host the championships, uh, the U.S. Opens. Uh, again, you you begin putting these trophies and these plaques on the wall, and it it it's tempting to take yourself a little bit seriously and mm-hmm. and to to hold hold yourself in such reverence. But at the same time, we realized that it started out with championships. We we've got to add color photos of champions to our walls of black and white champions, yeah. and 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 so the, the the evolution of Piners, in my opinion, began with the the championships kind of coming modern day. But then we needed. We need a little more fun. You know, it was a place you could come and get real serious and play with hickory shafts and, and wear your tam and, and tribute to pain. Uh, but it wasn't a place that that had a lot of energy at, at points. And yeah. so coming in and, and adding the cradle and thistle do and the deuce and, and a, a brewery really, to your point, is is a, a symbol of the Debnan family, our owners, who don't want to just live in the past. They want Pioneers to be a celebration of the game today. And so it really is unique in that you can come here and learn about the history of the game, learn about the history of golf architecture, and you can see how it's evolved. And then you can, uh, you can kick your shoes off, listen to a little music and go play the cradle. So it's a fine line. You know, we, yeah. we don't want to go too far either way. And I think, I think we were a little deep on the history side early, but now we've added a lot of fun and it's, it's really a place that has something for everybody now. As a member or president and CEO of the CVB, I'm not privy to your internal conversations at the resort. And it's interesting because I've heard you say, like, we never thought the brewery would be this popular. We never thought the cradle would be this popular. I'm sure you sit on those sessions with Mr. Debman and your team and talk about what's going to be next for Pinehurst. Uh, it, how, how surprised were you that the brewery and the cradle uh, and now probably the Cradle Crossing, the new bar that's gonna that's been built and open there that, that has been so impactful. Why why has it been such a surprise? Yeah, I, I think you know, we knew that, that the brewery would be popular. It was a great place to get barbecue and, and have craft beer. But I think the local community embraced yeah. it in ways that we never imagined. We thought that it might be more for our resort guests, but the locals love mm-hmm. it. And yeah. and who doesn't want to go to a place that the locals love? You know, right. so so it, it, it's it's a it's a cycle. Um, the cradle, I think, you know, we thought would be a fun thing for people to do in the afternoons uh, after they were done with 18 or 36 holes. But what we found now with the cradle is that people are out there at 8 a.m. If that's the only time that they can get on it, they're out there until the sun sets. Right. Uh, we found a way to make it fun. Um, you know, it tells me that just, you know, the the, the appetite of the traveling golfer is is hearty and, and mm-hmm. they're looking for a lot of fun things to do. And, and we want every time they come back to Pinehurst, whether it be something like the cradle crossing, we want to show them something different, you know, that we don't want them to feel like they're coming back to the same old Pinehurst every time they come back. So for somebody who hasn't been here in a decade, they, they will hardly recognize the place. And and that's exciting. You know, that, that it's a competitive market as we all know. And so we've got golfers have a lot of choices to come and we, we want to, we want to wow them each time they come to Pinehurst. And now with the resurgence of golf, unfortunately through COVID, uh, you know, we're in a great location uh, because you can, we're rural county and Moore County, North Carolina, can socially distance. Golf is a great game for that. How And it's impacting more than just Pinehurst. So we're talking about Pebble Beach, San Andreas. I mean, globally, golf is exploding. How much has that been an impact now? And how much is that going to impact what Mr. Debman and the resort decides to do down the road? Yeah, it, it's been an, it's been incredible, Phil. We saw, you know, our record year was 2019. Uh, when things were were really moving quickly, and and back then we were at the point of trying to decide: do we need do we need more golf? You know, uh, we've got nine golf courses plus the cradle. Uh, but, I'd say yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then then twenty twenty one this year is going to blow away what yeah. we experienced in twenty nineteen. So yeah, it it's it is affecting our our view of the future in a positive way, and uh, we're lucky that we've got land that the Debnan family acquired over a decade ago. We were going to 
Back in 2000, we were about ready to build a, a Pinehurst number nine and number 10 yeah. back then. And so we've been sitting on that, waiting for the right time. And so fortunately, we, we have 900 plus acres where we can begin to dream. Yeah. And trust me, we're doing a lot of dreaming right now about what, <laughs> and, and I'm glad, I'm glad that we didn't. When does that dream become reality? Well, that's what, that's yeah. the big question. I, I know. I talk about it a lot. And so I'm teasing it out there, but, but uh, I'm glad we didn't do something a decade ago, because I think now that we've seen the evolution of Pinehurst and the, the the energy that we're seeing with the cradle and the thistle do, I think what we do down there eventually will be different and it'll be inspired by kind of what people are really enjoying doing at Pinehurst right yeah. now. So I think shorter, more fun, more interactive, more social. Mm-hmm. You know, the, I think that the, the, one of the lessons of the cradle is that it's nine holes and, and you can see every hole from every spot on the golf course. So, mm-hmm. so while right. you're with your foursome or your sixsome or your eightsome, you're seeing 50 or 60 other golfers and you're just having fun being part of that whole celebration. So I think finding ways to in, enhance that and increase that when we when we do whatever we eventually do down at uh, at the 900 acres will be, will be fun to dream about. Now, next year, your friend Kelly Miller is going to host the U.S. Women's Open at Pine Needles. Uh, you get the chance to host another U.S. Open at Piners Number 2 in 2024. Too early for preps? Are you guys, uh, Bob Farron, who is known as the Keeper of the Greens, uh, already working on some things and enhancing the course a little bit, or what are you guys doing to prepare? I'm sure that you're already talking about it. Yeah, the the beauty of Pinehurst Number no. Two it now in its renovated state that Core Crenshaw did back in 2010-11, the golf course is doesn't have to change when it hosts the U.S. Open. It used to be the previous yeah. version of Number Two would have to get the rough grown up, the fairways right. narrowed, greens firmed up and, and sped up. Now uh, there is no rough. Uh, the fairways are the width that they'll be for the U.S. Open. And so when a, when a golfer puts a tee in the ground on the first tee at number two now, they're, they're playing a U.S. Open yeah. golf course. The only difference is that the greens aren't quite as firm and as fast as they'll be for the, the world's best players. So not a lot of change. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, if, if anything, it, there may be another tee somewhere here or there, mm. but there, that hasn't been discussed yet. That's, that's really the only changes that were made um, leading into the 14 open, other than the, the big restoration that we wanted to do, the USJ added a little bit of length. But I, I don't think there's going to be a lot of change to the golf course. And, and uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, it, back in, in 1999, Payne Stewart, I think, was, I should know these numbers off the top of my head. He was even or one under. Michael Campbell was even or one under. Keimer kind of ran away with things. He yeah. distinguished himself. But it's always fun to see who's going to win and what the score will be. So... It would be great to see Tiger come back to play in this U.S. Open. I mean, I think all golf fans would be rooting for that. But then thinking about the defense of this golf course, it was really really the greens, uh, to be honest. And how do you Bryce improve it? I mean, I, I can see this guy just pounding the ball out there. And, you know, w- what is going to keep him from driving 350 yards and and what do you what do you expect and what, what do you think he can do with this golf course yeah that, i think that's going to be the, the fun thing to watch and and so far uh no one has overpowered piners number yeah. two martin keimer you know hits hits the ball plenty long but but he won it around the greens he won it with his mm-hmm. putter that's uh, right because he didn't hit any chip shots he putted everything around the greens and so you know during the 2010 restoration, I heard Ben Crenshaw was with him when he said that these greens will always defend themselves was, was what he thought about with the turtle back and the crowning. Um, so whole locations, firmness, speed of the greens is going to be what we hope defends it. And, and whether you're hitting a, a seven iron into it or a sand wedge, if they put the pin in the right spot and you get a little, little uh, unpredictable lie, um, the ball can still go anywhere. So I can't wait to watch Bryson and, and see how he tries to attack Piners number two. And, and I'm sure he'll have mapped it all out and we'll have a strategy. But uh, as soon as your first ball visits the green and rolls off, <laughs> right. um, your game plan changes. If I had to pin you down, I wouldn't say pick who's going to win or, or three. Who would be, whose games you think today's game best suits Piners number two? Who Give us a little preview. Who, who might play well here? Yeah, I, I, I uh, like I said, I don't, I don't think even though the the scorecard might say it, it it's going to play seventy five fifty or something yeah. like that. They they always move the tees up and back, and so 
in the firm conditions that we hope that the players get to see, I don't know that length is really going to be a, a factor. Um, and so it's going to be somebody who can who can hit you know mid iron shots into the greens. Ross yeah. used to say a long iron is is the best test of, of the game of golf. The fairest test is what he called Piners number two. So I think it's going to be somebody. I, I'd love to see. Uh, I'd like love to watch Webb Simpson work his way around Piners number two. He went to Wake yeah, Forest. He's right. played number two a ton, played it back in the North and South. He's a U.S. Open champion, so he knows what it takes. So I, I'd like to see how Webb's going to play it. Right. Um, I think it'll also be fun for people to, to maybe come out and watch. I hope we have a local qualifier. Yeah, you know, we've got a great yeah. golf scene here of, of juniors who, who are do. going on to play in colleges now and who've played in U.S. Opens in the past. So so you, you never want to put too much pressure on him, but our, our local <laughs> Jackson Van Paris, yeah. who's at Vandy right now, uh, has played great on Piners number two. So I'd love to come come watch him play in 2024. Or maybe a former U.S. Open ch- or U.S. Amateur champion that, that played here. Uh, that would be that would be awesome as well. So a uh, little rapid fire for you here. So if you had to choose and play uh, to go this afternoon, would you play two or four? I'm going to play four. I played two recently, and it, it, it brought me to my knees. So I'd like to have. I a played two more to fun. get humbled, and, and it, you know it, it will bring you to your knees. Like you said, four. Gil did such a great job with that redesign. It, it's such a fun course to play. A lot of memorable holes as well. Just great vistas, you know, yeah. Very different from what you'll see in the sand hills. So I, I like going out there and just looking at the sand and, and and being able to see twelve holes from one spot. Yeah, real scenic. Heading down to the brewery. Obviously, going to have a pivot or an IPA, which I know you like. Uh, you're going to have brisket or barbecue. I'm going to have some pulled pork. I'm going to have pulled pork, and I'm going to smother it with uh, <laughs> with a sweet heat blackberry habanero barbecue sauce. It's my favorite. And if you had a choice between beer and bourbon, would you do brewery or the north and south? Boy, it, it, it's cooled off here this fall, and uh, I, I, I love the north and south bar right in the Manor Inn. I'm going to have an old-fashioned with there just a little Woodford Reserve, and I'm going to smoke it because we, we offer yeah, that as yeah. an option. I'm going to have a smoked old-fashioned. So we mentioned you're chairman of the Convention and Visitors Bureau. So if you had a weekend and you're coming as, as a guest uh, to this destination, what are you going to do when you arrive on Friday until, until you leave on Sunday? Just uh, don't have to go hour by hour, but like generally what, what would you do in this entire destination? Okay, so um, I'm, I'm definitely going to make sure I, I, I'm probably going to start my trip playing around the cradle if I, if I yeah. can get out there um, because it's very popular. But I think that's a great travel day. Maybe you only have half a day to get out there and you're not quite ready to play 18. So I'm going to go out and play the cradle, see the sand, get used to using my putter a little bit around the greens. Um, and then I'm going to want to dive right into some Donald Ross. You know, I've heard so much about Ross and these inverted saucer greens. So I'm going right. to, I'm going to get on one of Ross's courses, whether it be the recently renovated Elks club at Southern Pines golf yeah. club, or, uh, I'm going to go down to mid pines and think that, think that I can, uh, attack that short golf course and get humiliated as well. <laughs> it will and, do it to you. Or I'm going to go over to number three, maybe, you know, think yeah. of other Ross courses Absolutely. that are they're kind of number three is a, is a short. 5,200 yard par 68, but boy, it's got some of the coolest greens that you'll see. It really does. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get some Ross. I'm going to also have some great food, uh, mm-hmm. whether I'm, I'm going to Elliot's on Linden yeah. or I'm, I'm going to go to uh, the Villager Deli and sit right in the heart of the village of Pinehurst for a breakfast or a lunch and, and, and soak it all in. Um, might go down to the Pinecrest one evening and uh, chip some golf balls into the fireplace. <laughs> yeah. And I think they still have uh, in the men's room there where Payne Stewart, autographed the wallpaper in, in 1999 under plexiglass. So I'm, I'm going to soak in some of that. Uh, then I'm going to get, I'm going to play number two. There's no question. I'm going to walk the fairways where the greatest in the game have ever played at the Sand Hills. So I'm going to play Piners number two. Um, and I think I will spend some time in the village of Pinehurst or the, the Southern Pines area. Yeah. See the locals. I mean, I really do think that this community having local residents who, who love being, you know, hosts and love seeing visitors uh, helps distinguish our community. So I'm going to try to get into the into the villages and, and the downtowns and interact with some of the locals. Last question, uh, and uh, thank you again for your time today, Tom. Um, when you're lying in bed at night, what, what keeps you awake at night, either from a concern side or what keeps you awake at night because you're so excited to go to work? I mean, you have arguably the best job in the destination to be president of this amazing, iconic resort. Uh, what is it when you lay in bed at night that keeps you thinking, keeps you wondering and hoping for the future? Yeah, I, I, I want 
everybody, I, I, I love this place so much after being here for so long, and it, it, it stirs my soul, and, and I'm, I'm passionate about it. And I can't imagine anybody coming here and not having an amazing experience. And whether you're a golfer, a non-golfer, whether you're a child or a senior, I want to I want to find some way for you to connect with a, a part of Pinehurst or Southern Pines or Aberdeen that, that is meaningful to you. So whether you... Uh, are a fan of Central Park and you didn't realize that Frederick Law Olmsted, who designed Central Park, yeah. designed the village of Pinehurst. Right. Or whether you love horse, you know, horseback and, and you didn't realize that we have some of the best equestrian in the in the world here right. in Southern Pine. So I, I just can't imagine anybody leaving here and being like, eh, it was all right. So I, I think what keeps me up at night is anybody who comes here and doesn't love it. I, I just want to tackle them and, uh, and, <laughs> and and pepper them until I can can find some way because I think everybody there's something here for everybody and and, and I just want to help connect those dots. Well, we appreciate everything you do for the destination, Tom, for the resort. Uh, continued success. We could go on for an hour. There's so much going on in this destination. Um, you know, thank you again. Uh, appreciate your time. I also want to thank Joe Brown uh, from the Bradshaw Performing Arts Center and Sandals Community College for the use of the podcast studio here. And uh, once again, thank you for joining us. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay, that's Paradise in the Pines, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us for Paradise in the Pines. Subscribe with your favorite podcatcher. To see more episodes, go to our YouTube channel at Home of American Golf. For more information or to book your bucket list getaway, visit homeofgolf.com. Thanks for checking us out and see you soon. <laughs> <laughs>